Good evening, everyone. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you, Lord, this evening. This, we praise you for the opportunity to study. We ask that you cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, our wickedness. Please pour your Holy Spirit upon us, O Lord, tonight as we study your word. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, this evening, our topic is last day events. Of course, this whole uh, book, sorry, my computer is not very reliable. What happened? This uh, book is based in Matthew 24 and also Revelation 19 to 22. Let's just see how this one will work. And the uh, E.G. White Estate released a book called Last Day Events, a compilation of Ellen White quotations uh, regarding last day events. And normally it is like outlined almost sequentially. And uh, we have been listening to it and uh, usually studying it sequentially. But this night, we are going to look at it from the end going back. So we will look at the second coming first, or heaven first, and uh, we will look at it coming back. This will be quite fast, so I request your full attention. We are going to read the whole book, not actually the whole book, the headers of the chapters of the book. So if you look at the sequence in this right side or left side, we have here the last event in the last day event is the inheritance of the saints. Of course, we know that is in Revelation 20, 21, 22, when the saved are all in heaven, and that is after Christ's return, which the signs are all outlined in Matthew 24, mostly, and in other chapters of the Bible as well. Before Christ's return, we have the, of course, Christ's return is a literal, we all know that. Before that, we have the plagues. The plagues have a relationship with the evil people, like in the time of Egypt, the plagues only applied to the people who do not want, who do not love God. The plagues also has a relationship with the righteous. The righteous are not affected by the plagues. Like in the time of Egypt, the Israelites in Goshen were not affected by the plagues. But before that, all happens is the close of probation. Actually, if you think of it, it is not the second coming that we should be really trying. When is the second coming happening? Because the Bible says that we do not know the time. Even though Ellen White, if you type in, his, in her writings, if you type 6,000 years, you will find that the time of the de devil to demonstrate his government on earth is about 6,000 years. And even if you type 4,000 years, you will find in E.G. White writings that from the fall to the cross is 4,000 years. Therefore, we have a remaining of 2,000 years. But LNG White writings and the Bible do not allow us to calculate the time of Jesus Christ's return. It is written, no man, not even the angels in heaven, know the time and the hour and the date also. If you are thinking that maybe we don't know the time, but we know the year, let me tell you straight that Ellen White, in, his, in her quotations, interchanges the, time, the words time and year. So it is meaning the same thing. So it's very clear, even if there are numbers, we are not allowed to compute, and nobody knows really. And before the close of probation, actually after the close of probation, we have no more problems. You know why? Because those who are good will become, will stay good. Those who are evil will be still evil. And before that, 
is the seal of God and the mark of the beast. The seal of God, of course, is obedience. The mark of the beast is disobedience. And obedience is exemplified and really taken or uh, clarified in obedience of the, of the commandments, especially the fourth commandment with the fourth commandment which actually uh, explains all the other commandments. And before that, there is the loud cry. In this book, he says that the events are not exactly known as in sequence. We might think that the sequence is really like this. There are overlapping events in these chapters, but the compilers tried their best to put them in as much as possible the sequential order as they understood. But the book also says that it is, there is overlap and we really don't know when these things ha are happening. And we have the, the loud cry. If we look at the characteristics of the loud cry, I was looking at this many times and it looks really like it is happening now. For example, it says here that God has jewels in all churches. So we are not saying that we are the only ones to be saved because the Bible says we have to go and get the sheep that are in other fold. It also says here that in the loud cry, Babylon's fall is not yet complete. God's last warning message is to be laid the sins of Babylon will be laid open. So our message really, the message of the Bible doesn't change. Sometimes people try to water down the, the messages, but the Bible really doesn't change and spirit of prophecy doesn't change. The heart of God's last message is justification by faith. The message will go with great power. People who we don't expect to be very good preachers will be very good preachers. Even people who are not educated will be very good preachers. It will be like the 1844 movement. It will be like the day of Pentecost. Actually, it says here that uh, it will be more than the day of Pentecost. In the day of Pentecost, there were about 3,000 who were baptized in one day. If you compute now the accessions, the baptisms and profession by faith of the Adventist church, in the last years, it's more than 3,000 per day if you divide the total yearly into 365. So it's really happening right before our very eyes. God will employ agencies that will surprise us. God will employ laborers qualified by the Holy Spirit. God uses even the illiterate. So even if we don't know how to read and write, God can still use us. I personally believe from the scriptures also, and the spirit of prophecy that everybody has a role in the finishing of God's work. If God can use a donkey to speak to his people, God can use all of us. Even if our English is a little bit different accent, it's okay. I tell my friends who are preachers, it's okay. Even if our English has an accent of another province, just continue to preach because there are also people who speak that kind of English, who will listen to you, right? The mechanic will listen to a mechanic, the shepherd will listen to a shepherd, the cook will listen to a cook, the nurse will listen to a nurse. So everybody has a part. Children can proclaim the message. I was just watching the other night. One kid was preaching live in YouTube very powerfully. Ministry of Angels will help worldwide extent of the proclamation. Seventh-day Adventist Church is a worldwide doing it. Kings, legislators, councils hear the message. And many Adventists brace themselves against the light. Okay. There is also a little bit bad news in this book. Many Adventists will brace. They are, anong brace sa Tagalog? Parang tumasalag or umiilag. Non, uh, most non-Adventists will reject the warning. Even if most non-Adventists will reject the warning according to this header, 
our commission is still the same. Multitudes will answer the call. Marami namang, there will many, many people will answer the call of the shepherds. Thousands will be converted in a day, and the honest in heart will not hesitate for long. Influence of the printed page, that's why I see some people holding uh, leaflets. Okay. Now let's look at the seal of God and the mark of the beast. In the great controversy, there are only two sides, good and evil. The problem is sometimes family members will be separated and we are judged by the light we have received. That's why even Martin Luther, he did not know about the Sabbath. In fact, when he was asked about the Sabbath, he said, Sunday na lang. Magulo na. Marami na siyang. But it was not a present truth that time. That's why even if he did, he did not know about the Sabbath, Ellen White speaks positively about him. No excuse for willful blindness. If we know the truth and we don't obey, that is no an excuse. The importance of practical benevolence. Those who have money, we give. Motive gives character to action. What is the seal of God? The seal of the living God is placed upon those who conscientiously keep the Sabbath of the Lord. Okay, conscientiously meaning our thoughts, our deeds on the Sabbath. If we conscientiously keep the seal of God will be placed according to this. True Sabbath, uh, true observance of the Sabbath is the sign of loyalty to God. The fourth commandment alone of all the ten contains the seal of of the great lawgiver, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Ibig sabihin, hindi pala yung Sabbath yung seal. It contains the seal. Literally, if we read, it contains the seal of the great lawgiver. The observance of the Lord's memorial, the Sabbath instituted in heaven, the seventh day Sabbath, is the test of our loyalty to God. And likeness to Christ in character, in the sealing Time now. So now is sealing time. Oh, that God's seal may be placed upon us. What is the mark of the beast? First of all, we have to establish what the beast in Revelation is about. And of course, there are many characteristics of the beast, but if you want a shortcut, just read this. The mark of the beast is the papal, papal Sabbath. When the test comes, it will be clearly shown what the mark of the beast is, it is keeping of Sunday. The sign, okay. When the mark of the beast is received, no one yet has received the mark of the beast. Okay, we have to clarify this because many people in the internet are confused about this one. There is no one yet who are receiving, who is receiving the seal of the mark of the beast. When? It will be when? Kailan ba? When the law comes and when it is enforced. Ito, this one. Enforcement of Sunday observance is the test. Okay. How, how about the close of probation? It says no one knows when the close of probation will close. Sunday law's enforcement precedes the close of probation. So when the Sunday law is enforced, next one is close of probation. But no one knows. Probation closes when the sealing is finished. Probation will end suddenly and unexpectedly. Human activity after probation, they don't know that it closed already. Unbelief and forbidden pleasures continues. Men will be wholly engrossed in business. Religious leaders will be full of optimism. Satan infers that probation has closed. And there will be a famine of the word. Now we have freedom of the word. Later, in the, after the close of probation, nobody will preach as freely. No more prayers for the wicked. Transfer of character is not possible. That's why there is a parable of the wise and foolish virgins. You cannot transfer oil. You cannot borrow oil because character cannot be. We have to fix our character. God has to fix our character. We have to let God fix our character now. 
Another probation would not convince the wicked because they already had so much times, thousands of times. Okay, before the Sunday law, there is the cities. The cities will be the hotbeds of vice. That's why the more the city comes to AUP, the more evil is coming also. <laughs> Judgment is coming to the cities. Why? Because of the evil there, like Sodom and Gomorrah, New York City, there are many examples of cities. That's why AUP is built on a hill. It says here, the country living. That's why we have so many no class, even if there is no typhoon. Because it, we are the people who put AUP, they followed Ellen G. White's advice to put the school in the end of the road, <laughs> meaning up in the hill, because there is no flood. Country living is the divine ideal. It's away from the cities. Cities to be worked from the outpost. We have to go down, working from here up. Rich blessing in natural environment. Character development is, development is easier in the country. Dr. Paez has less problem with students who are in the country than in the city. Maybe. Better physical health in rural environment. Raise your own provision. That's why we have... Uh, AUP is teaching us how to plant. Okay, we locate our institutions just out from the large cities. And there are examples. Okay, but it is also said here, friends, that we should not all immediately come out of the cities because... Okay. There will be a sign, when are we supposed to get out of the cities? I don't know where it is, but I just remember when the decree in Jerusalem, when they saw that the people, the enemies were surrounding them, then was the sign that you have to run out of the city. Also, Ellen G. White says, when the decree and the law is passed, National Sunday Law, then is the time that everybody should run out of the cities. Now, schools and churches and vegetarian restaurants and hospitals are needed in the cities. I don't know where it is, but it's somewhere here. Now, let's go to very quickly to lifestyle and activities of the remnant. <clears throat> there is a spirit of self-service and self-sacrifice. I really like the attitude of the students who go for voice of youth. They're really self-sacrificing students. Occupy till I come. We are busy. We are not doing nothing as it, and living as if it will be our last day. There is again conscientious Sabbath observance here. So that's mentioned twice. That means it's important. And there is faithfulness in tithes and offerings. Sometimes I forget to give tithe. So I was wondering how to do it. I don't know if this is okay, but what I tried to do, I give advanced tithe. So if I forget, at least I have a buffer still. <laughs> Establish new institutions. We are continuing medical missionary work, and then God's people value their health. Okay, actually, tea, coffee, tobacco, and alcohol, we must present as sinful indulgences. Let me highlight. It's not a gray area, actually. It's black and white. Okay. Return to the original diet. That's why cafeteria is vegetarian. There is veggie meat and there is vegetable. Veggie meat is supposed to be transitional diet to vegetable. Do not eat veggie meat all your life. You are just transitioning. The school is always doing that because there are also always new students who are supposed to be transitioning. You maybe wonder, how come this guy is vegetarian? He got cancer. Maybe he ate veggie meat all his life. He never actually jumped. He is in transition always. Return to the original diet. There is a time for fasting and prayer. Entire trust in God. There is family worship. Guardian, guard association with the word. Recreation that Christ approves. That actually creates. And there is also music that elevates. There is... Uh, okay. Television and the theater is better to lock in channel 45, 3 ABN, Hope Channel. And there is also dress and adornment. People who are waiting for Jesus Christ will 
be submissive with the dress and adornment to what the Bible says. The need for publications and no sharp thrusts in our papers. That's why sometimes we cannot really attack the organizations because it is written we, have, we, we cannot attack them in our papers. And we should be aware of side issues. Sometimes uh, there are things, issues that are not in the Bible, not in the spirit of prophecy, that we put too much attention. The spirit of prophecy says beware of side issues. If it's not in the Bible, it's not in SOP, I think it is a side issue. Emphasize unity, not differences. And how to meet critics, never mind. Be like Nehemiah, we are doing work, we cannot come down. And we exalt the word of God. Okay, that is the lifestyle and activities of the remnant. And one more thing which I want before that is the chapter of the devotional life of the remnant, almost the same. And there is a very interesting chapter here which I want to emphasize lastly, since I already, we already know that everybody is worrying about Earth's last crisis, especially when there are big tsunami and calamities, Google finds out that more people are searching for last day events in Google when bad things happen. And there are signs, this is Matthew 24, when shall these things be? I already said we don't know, only God knows. And But it says here in this chapter that we don't know, but it will be announced later. God will announce the exact time and date when he will come. It will sound like thunder to those who, to the wicked, but to the righteous, they will understand the schedule of the, that's just a tip of the iceberg. But what I want to focus on is God's last day church. Let us see the characteristics in this, uh, in closing about God's last day church. Is there a, a church or we are just meeting in houses or is there an organization? Do we need organization? How much organization? God's people keep his commandments. The remnant. The landmark biblical doctrines, everything is based on a clear, thus saith the Lord. The distinctive mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is to preach righteousness, the angel's message. Why reasons why the Seventh-day Adventist Church was organized? Because God is a God of organization. And to protect ourselves from preachers who preach heresy, we have an organization. Organization will always be essential, just in case we find other people who says they are too tired of the organization and so on and so on. Please remind them, the books say that it will always be essential. Yes, it's not perfect, but it is essential. Just try to start your own AUP, start your own IAS, start your own hospital system, start your own hope channel. It's easier when we are all together as Christ has ordained. The special authorities of Christ, God's church in the Bible says, if it is bound here on earth, it will be bound in heaven. A time of spiritual weakness and blindness. Our church is not perfect. There is a time of spiritual weakness and blindness. There is sometimes an abuse of power in, at, at the church headquarters. We are very honest and transparent. These things happen, but just wait for the good news. Unwise leaders do not speak for God. Sometimes they are not perfect. They make mistakes. Nevertheless, a new denomination is not needed. Even if there are imperfections in the head of the work, even if people in the organization are not perfect, our writing says a new denomination is not needed. Very clear. This is the best promise I see organizationally from the Bible and spirit of prophecy. No matter how much chismis we see, we hear in the internet, whether it's real or not, there is a promise that God will set everything in order. God will fix everything. God will set everything in order. And distribution of responsibility is urged. You know why there are problems? For us to exercise our faith, 
in Ellen Joyce's vision of the go narrowing way, the faith, the rope becomes bigger and bigger. There is less and less things to depend on. God will set everything in order. Distribution of responsibility urge. So if somebody is, mal is misbehaving, <laughs> another guy can take over the Bible study group, something like that. Distribution, if we can also avoid uh, cults. That's why we have many officers in church, we have many churches, we have many officers in the conference, etc. And the 1901 General Conference session responds, and then the confidence on the SDA organization was reaffirmed by Sister Ellen White. That's why she never went out of the organization. Spiritual revival is still needed. And God is patient, very patient with his people. God works with those who are faithful to him. We are judged by the light bestowed and Israel's history as a warning. The church militant is imperfect, but the faithful of the church militant will become the church triumphant. So not everybody in the church militant will become faithful. Only the faithful will become the church triumphant. The church triumphant will be faithful and Christ-like. So that is the uh, writings, our writings, official writings about God's last day church. So, friends, even if we discover that uh, some of the disciples are saying bad things, against each other, they are jealous about each other, like in Jesus' time. Even if one of the disciples can betray Jesus Christ, even if some of the disciples has a mouth that has to be cut, you know, saying bad words, then Jesus uh, was uh, betrayed because he was so emotional. Just hold on to Jesus' religion. These are just tests. It's like in school, you cannot graduate without a test, correct? And the test is gradually becoming harder and harder as you graduate. The quizzes are small things. The tests are bigger things. But they are all needed for all of you, all of the students to graduate. So that is the outline of the last day events. Earth's last history, signs of Christ's return, and the... Uh, that is just an overview. I hope you will be more curious to read about this book, which is freely downloadable from the E.G. White Estate called Last Day Events. Let us close with prayer. Our Father in heaven, we praise the Lord for who you are, for your salvation that you have planned for us, that you have made available. We are sinners, Lord. We are hopeless. But you have this plan, this program of redeeming all of us sinners of helping us also to be strong in faith by exercising, by following the Great Commission and also helping other people to be saved. Please give us wisdom and understanding, Lord, to understand your word, the Bible and the Spirit of prophecy. Help us to, be, to remember everything that we hear so that you can remind us as you have promised in the Bible when we are asked. We pray for the missionaries who have gone out of AUP who are around AP, who are doing literature evangelists, voice of youth, and other ministries. Please pour your Holy Spirit, Lord, upon all of them that they may do efficiently what you have asked us to do. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers and for forgiving us from all our many sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our closing song, let us all stand and sing, Work for the Night is Coming.
Our Father in heaven, we pray that those who have listened, Lord, to your message, that these things be in our mind, that we never forget. We also pray, Lord, for everyone who is hurting, please heal them, Lord. Everyone who is discouraged, please give them encouragement, Lord. For everyone, Lord, for who is needing financial things, Lord, please strengthen their faith, Lord. For everyone who is working for their school, please continue to work through them, Lord. Educate them like Moses, Lord. We pray for the faculty and staff, the administrators, Lord. Give them wisdom and understanding to run your work, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.